The sleeping pad is one of the most important pieces of gear for cold weather and winter camping. And I think the Thermarest X-Therm is the best pad out there to keep you warm and comfortable on your cold weather backcountry adventures. I wanna share with you why I think it's the best, as well as some reasons why it may not be for everyone. Starting off with some good things about the X-Therm pad, the weight and size are phenomenal for winter sleeping pads. The size regular Xerm only weighs 430 grams for just the pad. If you wanna throw in your stuff sack and inflation bag, that's an extra 75 grams. Comes in a few different sizes. I have here the size large, which is 25 inches wide. There's a size regular in this mummy version as well, which is 20 inches wide. And then there's the Xerm Max, which is a square version of the Xerm, and it comes in a large size, regular size, and then a regular wide size. One of the most important things for a winter sleeping pad is that it keeps you warm. And the Xerm has an R value of 6.9, and I've tested it out in a whole bunch of cold weather conditions, and it performs phenomenally. The best pad I've ever tried for cold weather conditions. And there's a couple technologies that the Xerm is using to keep you warm. It uses thermocapture reflective film throughout the pad. It reflects warm air back up to you and cold air back to the ground. And then triangular core matrix, which prevents convective heat loss. So it prevents cold air and warm air from moving around the pad and mixing together. I've done infrared thermal imaging on this pad using a heat pad underneath in order to see how much heat gets through the pad. And you can see with the images that the Xerm performs very well. It has consistent insulation throughout. So you don't have any little hotspots that are gonna be kind of conduits of cold air to come up and cool you off. And it generally just insulates very well. It'll get you down to minus 30 or even minus 40 degrees Celsius if you introduce some extra components like a foam mat underneath it. The pad is really durable. On the bottom, it uses a 770 denier nylon and then on on the top a 30 denier ripstop nylon and I've had no problems with the durability with this pad. It also comes with a lifetime warranty from Thermrest and they're going to honor that no problem. The wing lock valve that it uses on the top here is also very durable and if you do need to replace this you can take out the entire valve and put a new one in. The valve that the Xtherm uses is a huge improvement over previous Thermarest valves. You guys have probably used those in the past where you have to twist it very quickly as you're blowing air into it to close it up so that air doesn't release. You have no problems with that. You just turn this one valve and then you can inflate the pad and then you turn the wing locks and then that can deflate the pad. And Thermarest advertises that this new valve will inflate a pad twice as fast and deflate it three times as fast compared to the old system. And I found that to be pretty true. It definitely inflates and deflates a lot quicker. The last good thing that some of you are gonna care about is that the pad is made in the US. So that may be a factor for you when you're purchasing this pad. Getting into the bad things, the kind of elephant in the room with Thermarest pads is the crinkle factor. So that reflective film that it uses to achieve one of the best warmth to weight ratios out of any sleeping pad out there is also very crinkly. So you can hear it right like that when you kind of move around on it and squish it, it crinkles kind of like a chip bag. And the Xerm does have that crinkle factor, but it's not nearly as bad as some other pads out there and it does decrease over time. As well, this pad isn't the most comfortable. There's a couple reasons for that. First of all, the horizontal baffles that the pad uses aren't the best system I find for relieving pressure points. When I am laying on my side, sometimes my arm falls asleep with Thermarest pads. The other factor is that it's quite thin relative to some other pads. It's only 2.5 inches thick. And for me, that's fine. I weigh 185 pounds and I like to keep my pads super inflated. But if you do like to kind of fiddle with the inflation factor of your pads, then you may end up bottoming out on this pad if you are on the heavier side. Inflating this bag is pretty easy. You can use your mouth to inflate it, but because it is a winter pad or a cold weather pad, I recommend using the inflation bag that comes with it. It just attaches to the valve here and then you can blow air into the bag and then squish that air into the pad. It's a much more efficient system than using your breath and you don't end up with as much moisture and warm air inside the pad. It's not the best inflation bag out there. I find sometimes it pops off of the valve and then the wide opening at the top makes it a little bit more difficult to get a good seal when you're pushing air into the bag. My favorite way to inflate this pad and my favorite way to inflate any pad these days is to use the Flextail Tiny Pump X. It weighs very little and inflates the pad very quickly and you don't have to deal with any warm air or moisture getting inside the pad. This pad is also quite expensive. It costs $220 for the size regular, so I know it's not gonna be in everyone's price range. So get this pad if you wanna be as warm as you can be out on cold weather trips, and you don't wanna be carrying a ton of weight with you while you're out there. It's one of the only pads out there that weighs under 25 ounces and has an R value of over six. But it does come at a cost, and you are gonna be sacrificing a little bit of comfort. If you wanna see the x pad compared to the only other two pads that have an R value over six and weigh 25 ounces or less, then go check out a video I'll post right up in the corner there. I compared the the Xterm to the Cetus Summit Etherlite XT Extreme and the Xped Downmat 7.